Now, let's be honest, commercial lending isn't the sexiest topic in the world, unless you're talking about saving money for your business. Let's lay out the most common ways business owners finance properties for their business. Adam. Liz. Tell me about it. So, Tell me some news on some commercial real estate lending. What are we What are we looking at? Yeah, I get this question a lot. You know, we've got a, a lot of options for commercial, but but really the the most common thing that you're going to do is going to be a, a full documentation loan in the commercial space. So what, what does that mean? So that means that we're going to take three years of tax returns for both personal and business, a personal financial statement, maybe some bank statements, that kind of thing to to qualify the loan. Okay. What could you use a commercial loan for? Like what are those loans traditionally used to purchase or how sure. are they collateralized? Yeah. So purchase or refi, you're going to get different terms for whether you're going to be owner occupied, meaning your business is occupying the building versus if it's a, an investment property. Yeah. So correction, this is owner occupied, your business is owning it. So not owner occupied, like this is your primary residence. Yeah. You're not living in the warehouse. Not living in the warehouse <laughs> or it's an investment property. Right. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And what could that be? Yeah. So warehouses, office space, retail buildings, uh, churches. We did a church. We have done a church. Uh, that was cool. That <laughs> the wild ride. Uh, yeah. So anything where you would house a business in, auto body shops, gas stations, although those are kind of a pain. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going to, so typically we're going to work with our partners in community banks or credit unions to get these done. So we're going to go local. We're going to go local for the most part. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And are these uh, institutions still lending nationally or how so does that work? I would say regionally. Okay. So uh, we've got a couple lenders where they're, they're big in like uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio. Some are cool with Ohio and like Indiana or Kentucky. I would say that in this space, to get the best terms, local lenders are going to typically be your best bet uh, above the national guys. Although I was talking with a national lender just recently, whom you and I both know very well, and uh, they're open to a broker relationship, but those can sometimes be challenging from an underwriting standpoint. Yeah. So Some uh, of those bigger institutions aren't going to help you. They're going to make that. Again, I always use the phrase of like, it's a big boat. So yeah. to move a big boat, takes a lot of finessing and, yeah. and movement. Whereas some of these smaller institutions, some of these local banks, they're they're very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very easy to work with. And so with that comes ease of the loan transaction, especially on something that has as many documents as this does. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's kind of a plug for working with a broker because we can tell you right off the bat, like who is going to be a challenge to work with and who is going to, and who's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. So that's something where you're not as an individual borrower going to find out until you're already a month into the process yeah, you don't know to see how painful it is yeah. you know but so there's so that said there's just traditional full documentation commercial financing and then sometimes we can get the sba involved the small business administration right and so they will guarantee a portion of the loan and they'll make it easier for uh, the bank to say yes yeah i've heard that sometimes the down payment's lower with an sba yeah. SB, sba loan is right. that correct Correct. Yeah. So SBA is only for owner occupied uh, commercial loans. Okay. You can get as little as 10% down for a, a real estate purchase with an SBA loan if it's owner occupied. Um, I will say the SBA process is lengthy. You know, we're working on a deal right now through the SBA and we started at the end of December and we're hoping to close in March or so, but I was It's a long process. <laughs> it's a long process, yeah. And a lot of it is because the lender ends up sending all the documentation to a branch of the SBA to uh, get their intake and underwriting and, and all that kind of stuff. You want to talk about a big boat? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. like the big. Yeah, yeah. It takes a minute to yeah. to get things done with them, but uh, still a workable deal. Very still, workable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Low down payment, way to get it done, but at the same time, making sure that you're knowledgeable enough about how that product works, feels, and functions to make exactly. sure is the seller going to give you four yeah. months to close, yeah, or is this something that needs to close in closer to you know forty five to sixty days, and we need to go a different direction. Sure. So, but yeah, I mean, I wrote a pre approval yesterday for uh, an office space up in Delaware for a chiropractic. Uh, uh, company or you know Office, practice yeah, and yeah. so uh, it can be that size we did a we're doing a 60 unit refi uh, on some uh, apartments in canton so it's it's diverse yeah i mean uh, it's really whatever you're really looking for in that commercially zoned space 
that, you know, the reason why someone would want to go this direction is traditionally rates are better? They are, yeah. I mean, and actually, I, so I'm curious what kind of terms you're getting on some of these these deals. Yeah, so I would say, you know, they, they tend to be either resets or term loans, which I think a lot of people are used to, you know, an adjustable rate mortgage, uh, which is very familiar in the residential lending space. So adjustable rate mortgage being a rate that's fixed for a period of time. And then after that period of time, it's variable for the rest of the term which most people are not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about the reset is it's fixed for a period of time. And then after that period of time, it relocks for another term, uh, which I think gives people a little bit more protection in regards to that fluctuation. So can you give an example of like that? Yeah. So like um, if we did like a five-year reset, so let's Mm -hmm. say five-year reset, I would say rates today are probably in the sixes low mm-hmm. sevens, depending mm-hmm. on the lender and uh, the transaction itself. So rates fixed for five years will never change over that five-year period. And then after that fifth year, they'll evaluate rates at that time, which none of us have the crystal ball and we'll know where rates are going to be in five years. But at that point, they'll relock the rate for another five years. So it just gives a little bit more protection than what the adjustable rate mortgage does, uh, where you're just kind of out there in the variable rate world. So so what kind of loan term are you getting? So again, this isn't going to be your 30-year fix that you're used to on the residential <clears throat> side. You're probably going to be looking at like 20-year amortizations, maybe 25 if you're lucky. We could spend the time and really figure out what's going to be the best fit for the transaction. But mm-hmm. it is going to be shorter terms, which I think some people are unaware of as well. Yeah. I'd say I, in some of my experiences with commercial lending, I've seen like five-year terms where you get, okay, hey, here's your loan for five years. We're going to give you a 20-year amortization, maybe 25. And then at the end of five years, there will be an underwriting event to evaluate and see, okay, well, where are we at? What's going yeah. on? Do they want the loan anymore or not? So yeah. I, I think that leaves some uncertainty. Sometimes that's the best you can get because maybe you're, you know, the property that you're acquiring is a little bit more unique. So it may be that you're in a term loan. Um, but if you are, be very mindful of what that means. In five years, you're yeah. looking at a full underwrite again uh, to see if that deal is still something the institution wants. And that's pretty normal. I mean, you hear about kind of like the uh, commercial apocalypse that's looming. And a lot of the reason for that is because because you have these five-year terms on these large commercial notes. Yeah. Well, five years ago, rates were significantly lower and you could get get the, the DSCR to cash flow. Many of you have heard DSCR before. So debt service coverage ratio is something that's going to be used in commercial underwriting as well. So that's where they take the income and the expenses of the property and they figure out the ratio of that. So what's the uh, income, what's the net operating income over the the, the debt payment? Um, and that'll give you a ratio typically for, I'd say, the a lot of these commercial folks, they want to be at like a 1.2 or a 1.25. So 1.2 yeah. or 1.25. In other words, your income is 120 to 125% above your debt payment. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So that was, so I forget where We're going to see a ton of refis. We're going to see, see a ton, ton of refis. Yeah. A ton and, of people yeah. that are relooking at their loans right yes. now and saying, I got another year or two. Yeah. I don't know that I would wait till the last second. Let's kind of be mindful that you're you're coming close to the end of your term. Let's start looking at these things and uh, re- really looking at um, what options you have to refinance. Yeah. And the other thing we're seeing a ton is equipment financing. Yes. So um, we did a large equipment loan in 2023. That was a great experience out of SBA financing. Oh my gosh, that borrower was being just gouged. I mean, oh, I think yeah. he was in like the 10% range. We got him down into the, you know, the high sixes. So huge savings really? uh, on his monthly payment. And so it's little things like that. I think, um, don't think of LFG as just, you know, your residential one to four, though that is our sweet spot. That mm-hmm. is something that we heavily specialize in. But this space is equally as much something that we can assist our business owners in making sure that they're they're in lending positions that are favorable for them. Yeah. It's yeah. huge. And, line, you know, so, that's, so that leads me to sit, talk about lines of credit. I mean, there are equipment lines of credit that are out there that are pretty cool. So I, you know, I have a number of relationships with some local community banks where we can look at your, look at your tax returns, look at your finances and say, hey, you know what, here's a, we could do a line of credit at let's say 10 or 15% of your annual revenue and, and turn it around really quickly. Very and it's not secured by real estate, so there's no appraisals. It's, I mean, like is your business a strong week, enough? A week or two, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you can get something done. So I actually had an experience. So this office that we just did a pre-approval for last night, she made the comment. She was like, "Hey, can I finance like 
10k uh, for rehab on the property mm-hmm. just going in put a new carpet and paint and whatever and i was like that's just gonna make the loan process more tedious and so i came back to her and said we'll just do a line of credit on top of the loan process that we're doing we already have all your docs we're already mm-hmm. looking at all these things we might as well just add this to the mix and she's like perfect yeah so it's just thinking on your toes of ways that you can really service the business in more than one level and know that we'll be doing those evaluations as we look at your docs so let's get it yeah 